Okay, so we're in the bedroom. Here's the closet. I'm going to do a similar closet building to what I've got upstairs in my master suite. Um, so you can see I've used the uh, one inch wood to create a box. I've got one divider in here. We're gonna have a series of shelves going on on the left side and uh, two hanging rods on the right side. Um, so, and I've got just my standard uh, building base, uh, similar base to what I use for the uh, washroom cabinets as well as the other building at the back door. So what I'm gonna do now, this is all just dry fit in here. I'm gonna pull this box or this material out. I'm gonna nail it all together as one box, level the base that's in there and then pop it back in. I've got some jam material. This is the exact material that the uh, pre-hung door frame that you saw earlier go in, except it's got no um, router marks for where the hinges are. I'm going to create a frame out of this material to go tightly fitting around this um, building unit, which will give it a nice, um, a nice detail, just like nice and smooth, no drywall, just wood to wood transition. And then I'll throw a nice casing on it and it'll be ready to go for paint. Okay, so um, as you saw in my dry fit, I have a center gable that goes down the center of this box. So before I assemble, the box, I'm going to mark a center line on the top and the bottom on both sides so that I have some indicator lines at where to set the gable and I also on the other side will have an indicator line of where to put the nails. Okay, so now I've got my center lines marked. Um, I'm going to put a bead of glue down each edge of the top and bottom piece, bring in my side pieces, and just shoot some brad nails down this line and down this line to attach the square box. Then I'll glue up the center line and drop the center gable in and nail it in as well. Okay, so the ground um, is not letting these be flush, but when I do nail this together, this is my front, which I'm most concerned about. So I need to flush these two pieces up for sure. So uh, make sure you take the time to uh, do the same.
Okay, so you can see here that uh, I did have a nail kind of blow out on the side. Uh, I'm trying, it's, it's not a big deal because it's on the outside. Whenever I'm nailing something together like this, I do definitely try to stay, stay with the nailer to the side that will not let the nails come out the front. If this had come out on this side of the building, then it's gonna be visible to the people when it's done. I've gotta spend more time in patching it all together. So, um, so no big deal if it happens to you. You're just gonna spend some more time before you can paint. Okay, so we're in a situation where I've built um, a rectangle shape. Um, just going to take this opportunity to show you a little bit of a square in technique. Um, this technique can be used all over the place, setting up for tiling, setting up for deck piles or building a deck, squaring up framed walls that you're framing, um, etc. So one real common way to know that this thing is square is to check the measurements from the diagonal corners. When you've got the diagonal corner measurements the exact same, then this uh, box itself will be sitting perfectly square. So, clip your tape on. I'm measuring um, 96 and 3 quarters. Measure to the other corners. Now I've got 96 and 3 quarters. So, we got lucky, it's sitting perfectly square. Um, I'm just going to pull it out of adjustment to show you how you can have a variation. Okay, so now we know it's out of square because I just had it square. Now you can see I'm getting 97 and a half. So me pulling that side back made this angle gain. So this is 97 and a half, which is three quarters larger than it used to be which I think this one will be three quarters less than it used to be. So you can see I'm at 96 or just under 96. So to even those measurements out, it's 96 and three quarters. So I just need to slide this back and I'm back on my 96 and three quarters. Run this one over here, 96 and three quarters. So this unit itself, is in fact sitting perfectly square. Just one last check, got my framing square. And you can see that that is sitting perfectly in there. So that's just one technique to square um, up most anything, is check the diagonals. Um, and there's other methods and I will get into those as well. Okay, so this is my center gable piece. I'm going to install that now. Um, I know that this is my front edge of the unit. So this gable I've set back from the front edge uh, just to give it an architectural detail. Um, got my indicator lines on here. So I'm just gonna um, measure this gable, give myself a, a, a stop line for the gluing and um, then I'm gonna glue up these lines and set the piece down in and nail it off.
Okay, so now I've got my closet building nailed together. I'm just gonna leave it for five, 10 minutes to allow the glue to set up. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to set my base level in the closet floor. Okay, so this is my plywood base for the closet building. Um, the closet building's bottom width is exactly flush with um, the bottom width of this base. So in the framed opening that's here, the rough opening, I'm going to want to center this and then level it. Um, first is a good idea just to check your opening again for level, just to see if you've got anything that you've got to deal with, like a really out of level stud or whatnot, um, just because it may affect you from being able to set this center on top if, if your studs are out of level. So just grab your four foot level and check the vertical stud. So that one's out a little bit. And this one is perfectly level. So I shouldn't have a problem setting this exactly center in my opening. All I'm gonna do here is just uh, work this base until I get equal measurements on each side. So, got an inch and three eighths on this side. And I've got three quarters on this side. Inch and an eighth. Inch and a sixteenth. So, sitting nice and center, drop my level. Okay, so now that I've got my base centered, I've got my level on the back line here. You can see that it's showing um, that that side has to go up to make it perfectly level. So, I've got to start by screwing down my low side so that I can bring my other side up to level. Um, you, cannot, you cannot screw down that side and bring this side any lower um, unless you cut the material. And I always like to just try to get stu stuff done fast. So in this situation, I've allowed for shimming space um, for my closet building before it hits the top of the rough opening. So I'm going to pin down my low side and then use a shim to level up the other side. Again, just uh, screwing down into the uh, base into the bottom plate of the wall. Got my cedar shim. Okay, so my cedar shim is in. If you look at my bubble on my level, I'm setting perfectly level. So I'm going to begin by just finishing off screwing the back line off, and then I'll come and level the front. Uh, so same situation. Uh, my high side is this side, not by as not by as much. It's not gonna have to come up as much, but it is. And I'm just gonna double check this way. And bringing this up that little bit will correct this level. And you can see there I'm sitting perfectly level coming off the wall. So um, put this level here and shim up that corner. Okay, so I've got my shim in on that side, and you can see that I'm sitting nice and level. Um, I've got no way to really attach this base at the front. Um, the closet building itself is quite heavy, so um, the weight of the uh, unit, and then once I get the door frame all nailed off, will hold this uh, base in position. So um, now I'm ready to proceed with uh, putting my building unit in on top of this 
to uh, attach it to the base. So you can see that this unit is fairly flimsy. Uh, once I get it into the opening um, and attach the frame around it, it'll be nice and solid, solid fastened to the frame so it won't be able to wiggle around back and forth. Okay, so I've got that up on the edge of the base now. Just gonna push it up in and slide it right back to the wall. Okay, so now that I've got the uh, unit lifted in and sitting roughly, um, I did make this base the same size as the top and bottom of the unit. So I'm just gonna use my uh, flat bar here and slide the unit over flush. Sitting pretty good on this side and sitting good on this side. So, uh, um, I'm just gonna take my level, see where I've gotta hold it. Now, I'm holding this unit level. You can see how out of level the studding is on that side. So now if we go to the other side, I had checked earlier and we know that this stud is relatively close to level so we should be able to see that right now too. Right there. And the gap along this one should be fairly parallel. So now that I've got this unit sitting roughly in here, I'm going to use that gem material that I spoke of earlier to create a door frame right tight around this um, building unit. Um, then I'm going to set it in loosely and use my cedar shims to pinch the frame tight against this building and then I'll fire some nails into the frame and into the building attaching it to the level frame. So um, we're in the bedroom where I am going to put some carpet in. So um, as I mentioned when I put the interior door in before, um, the carpet I'm using in here requires me to keep the door frame three eighths of an inch off of the floor so that the carpet can get tucked underneath. So when I'm getting my total height measurement here for the door frame, I'm gonna reduce it by three eighths of an inch on both sides. Okay, so just measured my vertical sides. Got 81 and a 16th on, the, on this side, and I've got 81 inches on this side. So fairly consistent to what we were uh, measuring before, or sorry, checking before when we leveled the front of our base. We probably lifted it up that 16th of an inch. So um, everything's real consistent with that. So gonna measure the top part and then head to the side. Okay, so that's my top piece. Now, when I'm measuring my uh, vertical pieces, um, this, um, this top piece is gonna get sandwiched between 
the two side pieces. So the thickness of this um, top piece actually has to be added to the length of these vertical pieces. So I can't just go with the exact measurement I've got over um, in the closet, which was the 81 and the 81 and the 16. I'm actually gonna take the cutoff piece that I've got here and mark a line um, on the jam material um, where the front edge of where the front edge of it's gonna be. And then now off of this line down to the bottom will be my 81 reduced by that 3 8 of an inch. And this one will be that 81 and a 16th reduced by 3 8 of an inch. So. Okay, so got my pieces cut for my door frame. Uh, just like to mention again, uh, this, door, this door frame is going to be uh, used for bypass doors. So um, rather than having hinges on each side and two doors that open up like this, uh, I'm gonna have a track that mounts across the top and two doors will bypass each other. So you'll get to access half the closet at a time. So you just slide the one door all the way over. Um, and then when you need to get to the other side, you slide them both the other way. And then when it's closed, you just open them both up. So um, just a little explanation on that. Um, now, you didn't get to see this step before um, because we used pre-hung doors. Uh, if I was building my own frames um, to do interior doors or, or whatnot, I uh, always use some glue. Um, glue down each end and use four to five brad nails into the header piece of each uh, into the header piece of each side. So, uh, so proceed by putting down some glue. And uh, you can see I've got my reference line for where I indicated for the top. So when I glue that or nail that together, I'm going to definitely make sure I'm back on that line. Okay, so it's all nailed together. Let's uh, lift it up and just fit it into our opening. So you can see that fit in there rather nice, um, nice and consistently tight across the side here. Um, on the ground, you can see that I've upped my 3 eighths of an inch on both sides of the
carpet will be able to be tucked underneath. So um, my next step now is just to uh, use my level and some shims to uh, get this side perfectly level and then uh, I'll shim the other side and get that level and nail it all down. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple of nails in my base, or sorry, in the base of this unit down into the base underneath here just to hold it from being able to move around on me. Uh, just going to use four brad nails, uh, two in the back and two in the front. So. Okay, so down here, I'm going to start by taking a shim, pressing it in nice and tight to my building unit um, because it can't move and then I'm going to level up the, to the top and then nail it all off. Now that that's all Nailed in, I'm gonna nail uh, one bottom nail of the building into the frame. Okay. So you can see here that I barely need a shim inside here. I'm just gonna put a nice small one in and nail this frame off at the top as well. Okay, I got it right there. And I'll now go to the center portion of it and put another shim in there. You can see it's sitting nice and level, so I'm just gonna put it in there to wedge it nice and tight and give it some uh, support so when I nail it doesn't push forward. You can see if I if I just put a nail in it, it would come off my building. So uh, now that the frame is all level and. Um, I've got it, the building uh, attached to it with three nails. I'm just going to go down the edge and put a few more nails to hold it permanently. Okay, so this side is all nailed down. The frame is nice and level. Um, haven't checked the other side yet, but I'm assuming that uh, the build-in itself should be showing me that it's perfectly level as it sits and I'll just be using the shims to bring the frame tight into the side of the building. So let's have a look. So that looks good. Um, on this side all I'm going to do is press some shims in here to bring the door frame tight to the side of the building and uh, nail it off just the same way I did the other side.
Okay, so I don't normally shim the tops of my doors. Um, in this case, um, I definitely want to put a couple shims in the top because when I shoot the nails into the uh, through the building into the frame, I don't want it, the frame to bulge up as I'm doing it. So you can see here, that's what would end up happening. So I'm just gonna loosely put a couple shims in, three different points across the top, just so I can nail this building to the frame without that gap showing up. Okay, so now I've got my uh, sandpaper. Um, it's a 120 grit sandpaper. I like to fold it into a square. Got a sanding block. Just keeps the uh, sandpaper nice and flat when you're working with it. Um, uh, what I'm going to sand right now is just these front edges of the buildings. You can see I've got some burning from the blade on the table saw. Um, also got a very sharp edge here that I'm going to break off on the 45 by holding it like this. Just really just creates a nice soft touch going around. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, sanding on the flats. Now I don't necessarily have to get the burns right out. I'm just trying to true up the surface so that nothing will show through the paint. So this is just to uh, flatten everything down, whether it's the factory edge or the saw, the saw edge, the sandpaper just cleans it up beautifully. Okay, so now that I've got all my flats sanded, um, I'm gonna go, going to begin to work the edge of all the uh, built-in material. Um, when I was in carpentry school, um, it was called, my teacher had taught it to us, called breaking the edge. So it's uh, taking a nice, firm, hard corner, um, running the sanding block down it on the off angle and then once more on a little bit more of an angle and then once more on the opposite angle. So um, after passing it three different times you should have a fairly consistent broken edge all the way around this building.
Turning it in a little bit, back up. Turn it other side, back up. So I don't know if you can see it up close, but uh, this edge is nice and soft. This edge is, on this side is still very sharp. So just, just enough to take that sharpness off the edge. Okay, so now that all my edges are broken, I'm going to proceed with caulking the inside corner joints. Um, I use a paintable um, caulking. It's white in color to start, um, and it will and it's paintable to any color that you want to do. In this situation, all my door frames and buildings will be white. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get my caulking tube right here, um, clean up all the dust that's on this, and then show you guys how to caulk the inside joints. Okay, so my caulking comes in a handheld tube. I just make a cut on the front. Um, I usually cut along the sides too, just so it can get tighter into the inside corner. Um, I'm gonna start with the frame and casing first. You can see this bad joint that I had at the start. I'm going to start with that, with the caulking. Okay, so you can see now that uh, the joint that was there is now invisible. Um, it may take a second coat to go over top of it again, but uh, you can see that it's on its way to um, being hidden. Um, now this 45 joint, I will, I will come in there with that white um, putty knife and filler uh, just to get this line afterward, but I do not want to touch my freshly done caulking. So, that's all I'll be doing for now. Okay, so all your trim to drywall areas, if you're going to be painting your trim, um, I suggest caulking down all those joints as well. It just gets rid of that fine line that would be there. Um, it, it will not go away when you paint over top of it. You have to caulk the line first and then the paint won't be able to go in between the joint showing that fine black line. So I suggest caulking all those areas as well. Just gonna skip this area.
Okay, so um, that's a pretty good start for uh, patching and prepping this building and casing for painting. Um, some areas where my inside corners run into other inside corners, I will wait till the caulking is dry to go in there and get those areas. Um, it's just better to wait till it dries rather than disrupt the nice joint that you've already created trying to get the other one inside there. Um, and I've, there's no real rush. I've still got to do a second coat on all the nails um, and, then, and then go through and sand all these panels, their sides and stuff, just to make sure all the imperfections are eliminated. Um, the more work, uh, same as everything, the more work that you spend in your prep is going to um, show in your finish. So um, if I treat this wood like it's a, a panel of a car and I spend all that time sanding it, prepping it, making sure it's gonna be perfect, then when I put my paint on top of it, it is gonna be perfect. If I try to rush through this project, I uh, don't sand every panel, don't look at every little deficiency, you will see all those deficiencies at painting time. So take your time with the prep, um, it'll be worth it in the end.